For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create a simple, traditional, responsive image slider or carousel using CSS and JavaScript. I'll show you a simple HTML and CSS setup, and we'll be taking advantage of the DOM element Animate API to create the magic, and as always, I have a lot of tricks to share with you. Support the channel by liking and commenting on this video, subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Now, let's dive in. Fun fact, this is the first image slider I learned years ago when I first started and the web back then was in a state that accomplishing this was hard and I remember using jQuery. On the HTML side I have this div tag with class of slider and inside I have a slides wrapper div where I put all the slides. Notice that I gave each slide a background so we can track the slides better. Right after we got the indicators container with buttons which help you jump to a specific slide and also indicates which slide you are seeing. And I flag the current slide by adding the class of active to the indicator button. Then the two left and right navigation buttons you can use to go back and forth. On the CSS side I have this simple body style to center everything as you can see on the right. And as always I box size, border box, everything. I also include a style for any image on the page of max width of 100% because images by default extend beyond their containers. For the slider, we will simply set position relative because we will be positioning almost everything absolute to it. For the slider wrapper, I'll make it 500 by 280, dark gray background and position relative so we can position the slides absolute to it. Now for the individual slides, I'll just make them 100% width and height. With that, we see the slides stacked, but what I want is for them to stay on top of each other on the same position. So I'll set position absolute top left zero, and now we only see the top slide and everything is under like a deck of cards. Let's continue styling and I'll come back to the slides to explain how we will animate them later. For the slide indicator buttons, I'll make them 6x6, no padding, some gray background and no border. I'll turn them into a circle with border radius of 50% since width and height are the same. Space them apart with 8 pixels left and right margin, pointer cursor and remove the outline that appears on focus. For the active button, I'll give it a distinct background color. Now for the indicators container, I'll center the buttons with text align center and distance it from the slide wrapper and below content with margin top and bottom of 5. I don't know about you, but these indicators are rather small, and I share this trick in one of my CSS tricks article, but what we will do is let them look small, but increase the clickable area so you don't miss them with the cursor. For that, I'll attach an after pseudo element, no content, position absolute, make them double the size of the indicator buttons, center them with the left and top 50%, and translate them on the X and Y axis by negative 50%. And I'll give it a red background so we can see them. It seems I need to add position relative to the button first. Like that, we see them. And I'll make them three times bigger because they still appear small. And we can remove the background. Now, notice that I no longer need to put the cursor on top of the indicators to get the pointer cursor change. Let's make this responsive now. Notice that when I remove the width and height of the wrapper, the slider collapses, And this is because nothing has a fixed dimension no more due to the fact it's all absolute position. And it is another reason I'm doing this without any images so this works with anything. Another trick I spoke of in my article is the aspect ratio and I want this slider to be a 16 by 9. And this is the formula and we see now the shape and that's what this is for, to give it a shape. Now if I go on the slider and give it a width, this width will work like a max width. When I resize the view, now the slider is responsive. And if I resize bigger, it will stop at 500 pixels. Gonna give it some left and right margin so it's not close to the edges. I can even make it slider max 900 pixels. I can even change the shape of the slider like one by one to create a square or like inverse of 16 by 9 to make it tall like a portrait mode on your phone. If I make this max width it will not work but the width behaves like the max width for it. Last thing we will style are the left and right navigation buttons and I'll make it cool for this. I'll absolute position them top left zero, 20% width and 100% height. 
and give it a debug background color and notice that it extends beyond the height of the slide and I don't want that. I could subtract the size of the indicators but if later on I change the indicators I'll have to remember to change this as well. So what I will do is absolute position indicators and is now taking the height of the slides. I will make it take 100% width, 15 pixels high. Let me give this background to see it. Seems like I don't need margin now and I'll make it 25 pixels instead. I'll also give this slider margin bottom. This can be anything, probably 75 pixels would be the best. So when you add the slider to the page, it distances itself 25 pixels from the bottom content. Back on the indicators container, I'll make it sit on bottom left zero but this is not what I want, but may work for you. So I'll shift it down negative 25 pixels, which is the same as the height. For the navigation buttons, I'll remove border and round their corners and give it a pointer cursor and remove outline as well. I don't want them both on the same side. So I'll, for the next button, I'll auto left and set right zero and change the border radius accordingly. For a better effect, I'll set their background off as transparent white, which can work great with slide images. By default, they will be hidden. And what I want is for them to appear when you are hovering over the slides wrapper. And I will use the sibling combinator to target the pref and the next buttons, then set the display to block. I'll also display them when I hover over them and what that will cause is the other to hide. This is because when you are hovering over one, you are no longer hovering over the wrapper directly. For the last touch, when we click on them, meaning when they are active, I want to appear less transparent for contrast. Perfect. With that, our slider is ready for JavaScript. I'll use a builder pattern for this. If you want to learn about cool JavaScript design patterns, I'll leave an article I wrote about them below. Super cool stuff. This function takes image source array, which I'll call images here and an option object, which for now contains default current slider index of zero. Inside, I'll create our slider div and give class of slider. Its inner HTML will be the two containers and the navigation button, just like we had on the HTML. And I'll destruct them from the slider children. Now for each image, I'll create a slide div, an indicator button and an image element. I'll determine the active class if the current image index is the same as the current slider index. Then I'll set this class both on the slide and the button as well. And the image element source will be the image from the images array. I'll append the image to the slide, slide to the wrapper and the button to the indicators container. At the end, I'll return the slider we built. I already Googled a bunch of image and I'll create a, our slider by calling it the create image slider builder. And then I'll append our create a slider to the document body. Since like I forgot N in the children and voila, our slider now appears and it seems like some images I picked are not 16 by nine. On CSS, I'll hide wrapper overflow and all is fixed. It looks super cool and the navigation button behave nicely. I'll also make sure the images fill the slide with object fit of cover. Now, the way this particular image slider work is when you click next, I'll grab the next slide and position off the view on the right. Then I'll animate the current slide and the next slide to the left at the same time. And the inverse happens if you click the previous button. So by default, I'll make all slides be on the right with translate X of 100%. And when it's active slide, I'll set translate to zero. And right now, only the active slide is in the center inside the slider. I'll create slide to function, which we can use for when the user clicks on the left and the right buttons, the indicators buttons, or when we do the auto slide and show. And it works based on the index provided. Now I'll attach click events to the next and previous buttons, which call slide to function. And for the next button, I will use math min to make sure I increment the current slide index, but never over the image length minus one. And for the prev button, I'll use the math max to make sure I'll never decrement the current slide index below zero. Now inside the slide to function expression, I quit early if the index provided is the same as the current slide index. I'll use the current slide index to grab the current slide and the index provided to grab the next slide to show. 
this can be the slide after or any position after the slide before or any position before i'll update current slide index to be the index provided and i'll use current slide index to remove the active class from the indicator button and the provided index to attach active class to the button indicator then i'll do the same for the slides to toggle the active class just with this we have our slider functionality it just has no transition or animation but everything works perfectly when we navigate left and right maybe you need a slide like this who knows but let's add some cool animation to this using dom element animate api so on the current slide i'll call animate it takes keyframes at first and the first keyframe will be the from from where we are animating and because it is current one we will translate it from zero zero and two for now will be 100% which will shift it to the right then I'll set a duration which I already set the fault in the options object then the fill forward so the animation remains at the end state and I'll create a constant for that finding that I ease easy and I'll comment out the active class toggling for now when I click next the slide slides to the right but i would like to detect which direction to slide to so i'll create a position variable where if index is greater i'll slide it to the left with negative 100 otherwise 100 to the right i'll replace it and test it and it works perfectly i have some cubic pegs here as using but i'll use ease for now For the next slide i just have to copy this and change a couple things and we animate from out of view into view so the final keyframe is zero zero coordinate and the from needs to be the opposite so i'll parse this position to multiply it by negative one to change its sign now when we try this we get our animation notice that if i click quickly it breaks and that's not what I want and we have this code commented out and what I want to do is detect when animation is done to toggle active class and do some stuff for that I'll need to promiseify the animate function so I'll create an animate async function which takes the element the keyframes array and options now I'll return a new promise where inside I'll call animate to the element with the keyframes and the option and I'll set timeout to resolve the promise using the options duration now i'll use promise all and copy these two animate calls here but using the animate async function instead then i can update index after and toggle active class on the slide with that we can fix the multi-click on the navigation buttons by having animating tracking variable and if we are animating i'll quit early also then i'll set it to true and when i'm done animating i'll set it to false now when i'm navigating i no longer can click repeatedly if i'm currently animating now for the last part let's make a slideshow and let this auto automate on an interval for that i'll create a timer variable and initialize it to no then i'll set timeout where i call the slide function with current slide plus one and use the slideshow interval Now inside the function, the first thing I do is clear the timer. This is so if it is about to auto slide and you click the next button, the auto slide gets canceled. So it responds to your navigation left and right. Then inside when the animation is done, I'll call slide again with a timeout where I check if the index is last. I'll start from zero, otherwise add one to it. Now it auto slides. Now, if I click any of the buttons, that takes precedence, and when I stop, it resumes to auto sliding again. For the final touch, I'll add some box shadow. Let me know what you think in the comments, and like this video to support the channel. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.